the best information on the world internet, we encourage you to leave a subscription and like. I invite you to today's report from the front. More than 10 Russian drones were shot down during an overnight attack on Kiev, the city's military administration reported Wednesday. These drones, attacking from several directions, were identified and destroyed by the air defense in time, revealed Sergei Popko, head of the administration. Russia used Iranian Shahed drones for the attack, and their debris hit several areas. In the Odessa region, port infrastructure was damaged, but no casualties were reported, Ukrainian authorities said. There were also fires in port and industrial facilities and elevator damage, added regional governor Oleg Kuyper. Ukrainian media noted that the drones originated in the Black Sea and headed west along the Danube toward Ismail, a key port for Ukrainian grain exports. President Volodymyr Zelensky called Russia terrorists, noting the damage, especially in the south of the country, and stressing that the attack was aimed at ports, grain, and global food security. Serhiy Bratchuk, chairman of the Ukrainian Volunteer Army South, said in a video that the aim was to destroy Ukrainian grain and industrial and port infrastructure. He acknowledged that there had been damage, fires, and silo destruction, stressing that Russia was aiming to cut Ukraine off from a future grain contract and displace the country from the global food market. Explosions were heard in Kherson, near Balaklava, and in Mariupol. Explosions were also reported at a military base in Sevastopol and in Havardiska. The takeoffs of several groups of Shahed unmanned aerial vehicles from Primorsko Akhtarsky were registered, the Ukrainian Air Force reported. A non residential building was damaged in Kiev's Solomyansky district. The cause was falling debris from a drone shot down as part of air defense. A tree is on fire in the Sviatoshinsky district after the wreckage of an unmanned aerial vehicle fell. No injuries were reported, said Mayor Vitaly Klitschko and military officials. New reports of casualties and damage as a result of overnight drone attacks in Ukraine report that two civilians were injured in Kherson during overnight shelling, the region's governor, Oleksandr Prokudin, said Wednesday. In the eastern region of Donetsk, Four people have been wounded in the past 24 hours, according to Governor Pavlo Kirilenko. In addition, an area near the town of Nikopol, located on the opposite side of the river from Russia's Zaporozhye nuclear power plant, was shelled three times, according to Governor Seri Lysak. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian Air Force managed to intercept 23 Shahed drones overnight, mainly in Odessa and Kiev, according to a morning communique. The United States has expressed confidence that Russia may be ready to resume talks on restoring the grain agreement with Ukraine, although it acknowledges that there is no concrete evidence of this yet. U.S. Ambassador to the UN, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, has indicated that Russia must return to this agreement if it wants to regain access to its own fertilizer on world markets, pointing to signs of interest in returning to discussions. Miss Thomas Greenfield, however, did not provide more details on the subject. More than two weeks ago, the Kremlin unilaterally withdrew from the Black Sea Grain Initiative, pledging to return only if concrete results were achieved to protect Russian agricultural exports. Russia has also threatened attacks on civilian ships bound for Ukraine, which has provoked Kiev to take similar measures against ships headed for Russia or its occupied Ukrainian territory. Last week, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres met with Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister, Sergei Vershinin, but there was no breakthrough on the issue, according to UN spokesman Stefani Dujaric. The price of wheat recorded an increase of 4% overnight, registering a rebound after a two-week low due to serious industry concerns about supplies. Corn prices also jumped 2%, driven by attacks on Ukrainian ports and warehouses and Russia's refusal to renew a grain deal in the Black Sea. We're hearing about new attacks on the grain infrastructure along the Danube, which is driving up prices, confessed a Singaporean grain trader to Reuters, adding that they are still trying to understand the extent of the damage. The United States has received indications that Russia is ready to return to talks on a deal that ensured the safe export of grain from Ukraine to the Black Sea. But as the U.S. envoy to the U.N. said on Tuesday, there is no evidence of this yet. In addition, the U.S. Department of Agriculture's weekly report on Monday revealed that the U.S. winter wheat harvest is nearing completion, supplying the market with much-anticipated milling wheat. 
Russian forces are conducting offensive operations in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. The Ukrainian military conducted 40 combat clashes with Russian forces south and west of Klyuchivka and northwest of Kurdumivka, near Avdiivka, Marienka, east of Staromayorsk, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine reported this morning. In the direction of Kherson, the Russian army shelled Sadovo, Tokarivka, Cossack, Antonivka, Mikhailivka, and the city of Kherson, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine reported this morning. The Territorial Self-Defense Volunteers of the Belgorod region received automatic rifles, anti-drone rifles, and UAS cars. In addition, as part of the handover of weapons, a UAV platoon conducted a demonstration exercise in drone work. Maritime exercises Ocean Shield 2023 inches have begun in the Baltic Sea with more than 30 ships and boats, 20 vessels, 30 aircraft, and about 6,000 military personnel taking part, the Russian Defense Ministry said. The Ukrainian armed forces are taking delivery of a new first-person view, FPV drone model. Defense Minister Oleksiy Reznikov announced Wednesday, the use of drones on the front lines is becoming increasingly common, and this particular model, which is manufactured in Ukraine, but mainly with foreign components, is intended to be another step toward producing key components domestically. By doing so, it wants to ensure independence and stability of supply. The defense minister said that over the past 15 months, the Ukrainian military has already taken delivery of more than 30 UAV models of various types, including reconnaissance, assault, and kamikaze drones. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Digital Transformation Mikhailo Fyodorov stressed in June that FPV drones are increasingly important on the front lines, helping to concentrate artillery fire. He added that the military needs tens of thousands of FPV drones every month. The British Ministry of Defense has issued a statement claiming that Russia is seeking to strengthen its ground forces as part of a long-term strategy to counter NATO. In its latest intelligence update, the ministry stressed that over the past two months, Russia has been organizing significant new military units to expand its land force capabilities. It is likely that Russia will use these new formations as reserve forces in Ukraine. However, the Defense Ministry notes that without an extensive mandatory mobilization campaign, Russia is unlikely to raise enough new recruits to form even one new army. This indicates a change in strategy on Russia's part. Since the invasion of Ukraine, the country has mainly used reservists to supplement existing units or territorial defense regiments. Rarely has Russia created new, self-sustaining armed forces. An exception was the Third Army Corps, formed the previous summer, which, however, failed to perform satisfactorily. The Institute for the Study of War has reported that Iran plans to build drone factories in Russia and Belarus, according to their daily update. During a meeting in Tehran on Tuesday with Belarusian Defense Minister Viktor Krenin, Iranian Armed Forces Commander-in-Chief Mohammad Bagheri expressed his desire for closer defense cooperation between the two countries. There is a belief that the officials also discussed the creation of Shahed Kamikaze drone factories in Belarus to aid the Russian invasion during the July 31st meeting. Ukraine claimed in May that Iranian engineers were considering the possibility of converting factories in Gomel, Belarus into drone production facilities. At the same time, the Biden administration revealed in June that Iran was supporting Russia in building a drone factory in the city of Yelabuga. Such projects would allow Russia to more easily procure Iranian drones, eliminating the need to transport missiles through the Middle East and give a boost to Iran's economy which is struggling with inflation at around 47%. It is worth noting that Iran has signed long-term strategic agreements with both Russia and Belarus. Turkmenistan's flag carrier, Turkmenistan Airlines, has decided to suspend flights to Moscow, explaining this by security concerns over Ukrainian drone attacks on the Russian capital. The airline's representatives explained, due to the situation in Moscow's air zone and in order to assess the risks and ensure the safety of flights, all flights on the Ashgabat-Moscow-Ashgabat route are temporarily suspended. Instead, Turkmenistan Airlines plans to operate flights to Kazan, a city about 700 kilometers east of Moscow. It is worth noting that drone attacks led to the temporary closure of Vinukovo, one of Moscow's four airports, earlier this week. 